Bizarro will come in and pitch for the Red Sox. He was added to the uh, roster as the 27th man for this doubleheader. It's Major League debut right here. It's a big moment for him pitching in this ball game. And there's a little nerves, a little uh, anticipation, everything else. We saw Kirloff make his regular season Major League debut in the first game of this doubleheader. And now see another young man getting his first try in the big leagues. See how he does. Strikeout pitcher. Didn't give up any hits. At least he didn't in the minor leagues. We'll see whether the Twins can make some noise here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And just one last reminder. This is the bottom of the seventh in a seven-inning game. It would be nice to maybe string a couple hits together here, have a positive note to end on. I don't know whether Barnes would have been available after getting the save yesterday and again in game one, but it would have been nice if he were deemed available if the Twins had got him into the game because then it would certainly mean he wouldn't be available tomorrow. And a rise sends one foul. But, you know, you played with Brian Dunson. He got the win in both games of a doubleheader against the White Sox. You just don't see much of that anymore, even for closers. They got a save on 11 pitches. They're, they're really careful with them now. Yeah, all the up downs and the you know, getting hot and trying to make sure you're preserving, you're saving guys and preventing injury. And I agree, would have been almost shocking to see him, especially after pitching yesterday. But you'd like to put some pressure on and force him to get somebody up in this bottom half of the seventh. On the ground. Hit right to Arroyo, one away. Two outs away from their fifth straight loss. They won the first two series on the road. Won the first game of this homestand. But then the Mariners won the last two. And the Red Sox look like they're going to win the first three. Twins need to get Sano going. So far today, the foul out on the first pitch and then a strikeout swinging. Ball one. Yeah, it would be good to see him make some solid contact right here and we'll give him something positive to take away from this day. Been a struggle, but he's just one swing away. And a half swing there. And it's one on one. Just a little bit. He was trying to stay on the fastball there. It was a little out front of it. 2-2. Two -two. And now 3-2 and two with Kepler on deck. This is kind of a lot of what we've seen in his at bats. It's been, you know, pitchers getting ahead and then they're just trying to get him to chase. And pitches right around the edges of the strike zone. And to his credit, he's had a lot of full counts like this. And he takes ball four. So no, has been a little more patient, which is any hitter's key, but. Now has drawn 10 walks, yet has only three hits. So you look for the positives. He's still getting on base. He's, he didn't give that at bat away, even though he fell behind. He was still able to work his way through it. And there's still positive signs. I think if he continues to stay disciplined, he's going to get rewarded eventually. And eventually, t teams and if you get the hitters behind him, start to get hot, start to make that opposing pitcher pay for pitching around him and walking him and. You know, he starts coming around to score a bunch of runs. Eventually, you have to get back within the strike zone, and, and that's where he really does the damage. Breaking ball, swing on a miss, 0-2 to Kepler. We 
you can't really say that it, you know, could be the cold weather. I mean, some hitters just don't like hitting in the cold because last year we didn't get started until the end of July, and he got off to a slow start that year too. And, of course, we had a shortened season, so... Side. You know, and when, when the team to start the year was winning ball games and playing well, you kind of overlook it and you just take your time and wait and you're patient with them because you know what he can do. And it just gets magnified a lot more when you're not winning. Like you said, it, was, it seemed like it was mostly Cruz and Buxton doing a lot of the heavy lifting for those those first wins in the first nine, ten games. You need some other guys to kind of pick you up at times and expect Sano to be one of those guys. And a half swing, but strength three. Kepler's gone two away. Second strikeout today for Kepler. First major league strikeout right there for Pizzardo. So a big moment there for him. Well, he's got plus breaking ball right here. This thing's got some real sharp downward movement and threw a few of them to Kepler and Kepler unable to hold up even after he had seen a couple of them earlier in the at-bat. Here's Cave. 0 for 2. A strikeout and a ground out. Woods with just five hits. A double and four singles. swing and a strike one on one to Cave even Kepler's swings were half and three quarter swings so yeah there must be some sharpness to that breaking ball yeah as, as we were talking about with Philbert you know that ball could maybe jump up a little bit out of the hand good break to it and again a check swing and again a strike well you can understand why the Red Sox added this guy making left-handed batters look very tentative up there. Yeah, it's that down and in and breaking ball to lefties and you commit to it and see Cave unable to hold up there, see if he goes to it one more time. Off the plate this time. Yeah, that one popped up and kind of spun out of his hand, but yeah, it looks like it's got some, you know, comes out very similar plane as his fastball. And he's also got, you know, mid-90s on that fastball, so it becomes you have to start a little bit sooner. You have to get ready to hit that, and then some well-located breaking balls. Inside off the plate, another not a half swing, a quarter swing by Cave. Three and two with Sano at first. He drew a one-out walk. If Cave reaches, Garber will bat. taking off. Again, tomorrow's game is a noon start. And it looks like the Twins will try to end the five-game losing streak and snap Boston's nine-game winning streak. Well, that's the beauty of baseball. When you're going good or you're going bad, pretty good chance you're going to have a chance to do it all over again the next day and see if the Twins can bounce back and find a way to go on the road happy. Ball four, Cave takes a walk. First and second now with two down. And Darver will have a chance with a couple of men aboard. Darver with a single and two strikeouts. When the Twins hit the road after tomorrow's game, First time going to the West Coast in two years. Yes, and six games, four of them night games. Over the inside edge, three in Anaheim, three in Oakland, and then a quick homestand against Pittsburgh, and then they go to Cleveland, then they have a nice long homestand against Kansas City and Texas. be 
be nice to see Garver find a way to get a hit here, drive in a run, and you know, give you a little positive feeling heading into tomorrow. Big cut and a foul back, two strikes. And a good swing at that ball. Center cut, 95, but he's throwing so many breaking balls. Just trying to make sure you're not up there chasing, especially after a couple of walks and the guys in front of you. side they'll go to the short way to get cave and the Red Sox are on a roll they've won nine in a row and the twins have lost five in a row and are now a couple games below the 500 mark yeah look to end this thing quickly tomorrow and get the quick turnaround be back here for a noon start and for the boys to come out and maybe string together a few broken bad hits or whatever it is to get the rallies going and, and take the pressure off and score some runs and find a